Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Let me tell you, I love online shopping because I'm too busy to go to the store. And also, I just don't really want to be around people. So I online shop typically all of the time. My groceries, everything. I get online stuff, school supplies, online clothing, online furniture, online. But you know what really makes me mad is when I don't have a promo code ready when I'm ready to check out. Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. How it works? Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey scours for coupons it can find for the site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I personally love using Honey because I love saving money and Honey makes it very easy for me to find coupons that I might not have known were out there, especially because I don't subscribe to all the sites that I actually shop from. So Honey makes it easy so that I don't have to have all these unwanted emails from every single store I I would like to shop at or shop at in the future. Honey will find those coupons for me so that I can use them when I want to. And I've saved actually quite a lot of money, especially when shopping for furniture because of Honey. Well, Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid in supporting this show. I never recommend something I didn't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. That's joinhoney.com slash crew with a K. Crew with a K. Nice quick pre-roll. Eight, and five, four. <laughs> Three, two, what up, y'all? Welcome to Here's the Thing. I'm Kevin on stage. She. That chick ain't this. Welcome to another podcast banger, episode. Banger, Smash banger, that banger. like button. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Bang, 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 all bang, 2020. Bangers, bangers, bangers. Jeffrey. Over the cousins. Be a little around me. Church announcements. This week it begins. Kev goes back on the road. The quick tour. Yeah, yeah. Just a quick couple dates. Uh, San Jose, a.k.a. the Bay or the East Bay. I'm pulling up this Thursday. I'm going to be there for one night only. This Sunday, I'm going to be in Fayetteville. I don't know if there's tickets left to the Fayetteville thing. It's not really a tour stop. It's a college installation with Chancellor, but I'm going to be telling jokes. How much time are you doing? 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Next week, Kansas City. I'm going to Kansas City. Kansas City, here I come. Mm-hmm. That's on Friday and Saturday. The rest of my days, check out at camelstage.com. Detroit, Nashville, I got you. I just set up Nashville. It's going to be in January, I believe, the 27th to 29th. Mm-hmm. And Detroit, I told my agent, get me down to that Detroit, mm-hmm. Michigan, because them blacks is upset with me. Even though I wanted to go to Detroit last year, all the clubs were not available. So it's not my fault. We were like an hour away, though. Yeah, it's a little bit. They don't care. No, they don't. But then if you go to uh, Royal Plainfield or... Or Whitefield, and they like, you ain't even in Detroit. But then when you're in Detroit proper, they be like, ooh, that's too Detroit. I don't go to that part of Detroit. Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't win with the Detroiters. Uh, what is it, Royal Plains or something? What's Royal? Uh, Lord, that's a good song. Okay, no, sorry. Never be Royal. Royal Oak. That's what it is. Um, I remember one time I was in Detroit, and people in Detroit were like, like Detroit proper. And they were like, mm-mm, not, not after me. dark. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, we're, what do we y'all a, want? And we were in a church. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they were like, that's to Detroit. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you want? They had armed security at the church. Yeah. Kevin, you sleepy boy. Oh, you no. You tired I, boy. I am on fumes. I can see. You did the first 20 seconds of your talk with your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'll tell you guys now, I ain't got it today. The book tour took it out of me. Two weeks straight of crisscrossing the country. My allergies are acting up. We started back with our trainer. Uh, he has something to prove. Yeah, yeah, he does. His I, paycheck, dog. And I get it, but also, I, I don't have, I don't have no more energy. I said that one on purpose. I know. I need more energy. Mm. So y'all, pray, y'all bear with me. We just shot on. I mean, we literally came back from the book tour on Saturday. Immediately went and prepared. We well, went to Target to see our book, which was crazy. Uh, and then we immediately went to JoJo's soccer practice. No, oh no! I mean, we soccer. Went to his birthday party. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Birthday party. Birthday, ga- birthday game. 
Oh. And Sunday he had a game. And then Monday we back at it at the gym at six forty five. So I ain't had a day off in There's there's none, Kev. Going on two weeks. It's all right. We'll have a day off on maybe Christmas Day. Yeah, and I don't know That's why it. Kev is going on tour. He's don't do he this. He just can't be still. Shut up. This is triggering. Don't do this. All right. <laughs> Oh Bishop Lamar Whitehead is back in the news. This time, he grabbed a woman. Josh, put the video here. Putting the video. He grabbed a woman by her hair, back of neck, and pushed her. He came and said that uh, his he, he, the lady was charging his wife. The lady went on Larry Reed Live and was like, I was not charging his wife. She was mantling. Yes, yeah, she was. That was great, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> man to me was I watched that clip a lot it was so fun I let say. me man to you <laughs> I said boy that church get, unruly cousins are at their peak doing church stuff oh yeah that is peak unruly cousin it's behavior it's a lot of yelling and a it's a good time a lot of yelling and I'm just let me man to you you look like Emperor Palpatine you know? <laughs> I know especially she was like <laughs> do it that's where Whitehead need to go to the Emperor Palpatine. He, he need needs to, go, to be mantled uh, by Juanita. He need to go to the Prayer Institute. Juanita just needs to go to that church. Yeah, all of them. just do a do a thing in <laughs> Brooklyn, Canarsie. He said he want to fight D.L. Hughley for a million. Apparently, mm-hmm. he said he wants to fight Larry Reed live. Um. Anyway, the lady says she did not go there to start no drama. She wasn't sent there by Larry Reed. She said she was. This is kind of odd though. She says she's an author, and she went there to get. To do research for her book. And basically, he called her up and she was speaking in tongues, which you can kind of see. And then somehow he grabbed her. Listen, I I don't under. Hey, hey. Your church got robbed in July. Mm-hmm. If you didn't have security then and you still want to open the doors, you should have security in your church if you already got robbed. Under no circumstances should you, the pastor of a church, be physically moving anyone, p- putting your hands on people, not praying for them, like physically All grabbing somebody. Hey. Oh, oh, no. You broke okay. it. No, Is that okay. yours? It's fine. Yes. Yeah, it's Was all right. deep? Limited yes, edition. Uh, it's not broken. It's fine. It's Is it fine. broken? No, Did it's it break? Not. No, it's, it's okay. Yes, it's in pieces. It broke? Joshua. It broke his heart more than Oh, it didn't break. <laughs> no, it's okay. There's stuff in there that rattled. Oh, I was like, it's not broken at all. Oh, sorry. So he grabbed her by the neck like this and pushed her. And then he went back to the mic and like, ain't nobody going to charge my wife. My baby. He didn't call her wife. Or my baby. My baby. You should have security, armor bearers, whatever you want to call them, that should be protecting you and protecting your family, especially if you get robbed. Everybody ain't able to afford that. But if that happened in your church already, then either shut down or or have somebody, but also just shut down. Take. I don't want my pastor offering to fight Dio Hughley and going back and forth with Larry Reed Live. Oh, this man is unwell. He should not be. There was first of all, there was there's more Funko Pops on these tables than was at that church. Oh, it, it looks on, very empty on either desk. Well, the most egregious thing is the suit he's wearing during this. <laughs> this is the most egregious thing. If you look at what he's wearing, I think he's. Is it Dior? It's, it's something that uh, makes again. the camera like sh- like vibrate. <laughs> it is a mess completely. It looks oh, like Dior a Dior suit. That's what like five bands. It's way more than that. Well, it remember is he, had, the, the, he took the, the, the lady's pa- money. I know, but he got robbed. He got it. Oh, it is Dior. Angel. It is the uh, Dior. It's too much. Too much. It's too much. Someone said Bodega Dior. They he, call it. <laughs> They Do call it snore? buzzing when the camera yes. can't see it. It the man I've seen rappers dress less flashy <laughs> than what he is, is dressed. Fake? Is he wearing fake Dior? No, he's more. It's more than likely real. He more than likely spent a lot of money. Okay. He b- trust and believe. It'd be the small churches that be given the most. They'd be like. Do you think he has a Movado watch? Uh, oh, absolutely. He got the Movado. He, the, they got him the Movado. They got I wonder Movado. what his online viewership is, because maybe it's like it's pretty high there, and that's what keeps the no. the building fun. How do you know. how do you fund the building with ten no. members? I d- you take you take the ladies' life savings. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> I mean, you, you getting you, 
if she ain't the only one, you get 50 to 85K a pop. Come on. People are giving money because they believe <laughs> in whatever foolishness he's talking about. But the fact, he knows the camera is there. Oh, my gosh. And he grabs this woman by the back of her head so and wild. neck. And she ain't no petite woman Mm-mm. at all. And he really is like, I'm a, go- I'm a. I'm gonna go there with you. He grabbed her like animals grab their their young yeah, when by the just rough. Them up. Yes, like why are you putting your hand? I don't want to see the man on my timeline anymore. And I don't want to. I don't want to. What you? I don't like it. He uh, he is a whole shame. And you, we be sitting people down for being pregnant. Sit him down. <laughs> Set him down in his Dior suit. He don't need to preach. Nothing. No time soon. He needs to go through some sort of. He yes. He needs to go to the institute because I'm gonna tell you. Well, Juanita ain't gonna have it. Oh no, oh, no. She ain't Juanita may be a lot of things, but she is, she she ain't never been this. She ain't never been this. And she, she gonna, knows how to rightly divide that word of truth. She gonna take that body and bust his head open, and be like, "You are not under the Holy Spirit when you're up there in the diosu." Let me mantle you. <laughs> First of all. She knows you just wear one big you symbol. You wear one. You don't be Dior'd out. You don't go the jacket and the pants, and that's a lot. That's a that's a busy pattern. It is to very wear, busy. It's 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 for purses and stuff. This if this ain't a a, a, a honk for Jesus, I don't know what is. <laughs> this is straight up honk for Jesus in this outfit. It really is. Do Look, you you don't you never you said you don't be embarrassed by this stuff? Do you? Uh, no. For the body of Christ? Mm-mm. No. I, you know what? The body, look, because I don't consider this a part of it. I consider this <laughs> the shenanigans that are folk that have gotten too much goddamn on power and have lost their way. Like This is the shenanigans of Christ. This is the shenanigans. This is not the body the of Christ. Shenanigans of the body. You know, we... It'd be, it could be easy, especially if you believe these people, if you believe the people who are in the pulpit looking like this, that, that talk a certain way and whose egos are actually the thing that's driving them to do. And I'm not saying that the, a pastor can't have ambition, but. He got that ambition, baby. He, look in his eyes. He got something. A, a mental illness is what he got. That's what you can look in his eyes and see. But no, I don't get embarrassed. I'd be like, yup, this is exactly what these, he was stupid before he had. <laughs> Any type of title. He's still going to be stupid <laughs> and crazy with the with this suit on. I mean, I don't know what's in my thing. Grease and eyelash glue is all up in my eye. you want eye. to take a second to find it? No, it's just going to swim around there until it makes it to the corner of my eye. I can get it out. But regardless, there's no way I could sit up. I can't believe people are still sitting up in I, this church. That's the first thing I thought, Angel. There's no way. And if he, How y'all back up in there? They're like, yep. We're going to be in here. It, at least if y'all really think he is like so dope of a pastor to stay under, put out some videos of him not being stupid. Listen, if my church gets robbed, God don't, God's not protecting there. I, come on. I'm never going back. I'm finding a new community. I just. That's mine. I'm going to stick, stick beside, beside him. Beside. No. I know I have. No, no, that's a lot. I have stuck beside a pastor who was doing stuff that wasn't right, but Ooh, it wasn't. You done stuck beside him? Because he, his, I was like, now he preached good. Now <laughs> I said the rest of this stuff ain't affecting me. They tried to, th- they tried to have a whole coup, a coup. You know when they tried to overthrow the pastor? Oh mm. yeah, and me and Marcus had, did we, we either they we, stormed the altar? They, the listen, yes. <laughs> They waited. They were. They were. They had enough orderly fashion that they waited until service was over. But soon as service was over, so what was their intended result? To call him out on all of his lies. And then he was going what? Quit? I don't know what he was going to do. But me and they didn't get. They didn't get past. We got to call him out. I don't. I don't know what they were. Like the church ended up finally dwindling. But me and Marcus was so mad because we left at the end of service and missed it. Dang! They stormed. They stormed the altar. Yes, uh, it was the storming of the Capitol, they, and I missed it. They were like uh, your boy Gerald on uh, House of the Dragon on Sunday when he went up to Damon Targaryen. He was like, hey, men pay for crimes in the veil. And Damon was like, nigga, who are you? He right. was like, what? I'm that girl's cousin. He was like, he said, by I'm the here. way, give me that castle. <laughs> give me that property, He please. was like, what? I, this was supposed to go a different way. That's how y'all people were. <laughs> yes. They was like, hey, man, you're going to pay for them crimes. They were like, man, shut up. Shut up. Y'all see y'all next service. 
<laughs> this show is crazy good. You don't watch it, Josh? Or you watch it? Mm-mm. Josh, I haven't watched Game of Thrones. It don't matter. I thought you were watching the last one. Weren't you watching it with us? No, I was. I was off when you guys were like, "Oh, I don't like it." I was like, "Man, I'm not gonna waste seven seasons of my oh, life." You man, don't need it. come. You don't, you don't need other. You don't need to watch that. I'm catching up. I'm catching nah, up. Nah, start with House of the Dragon. Okay. Let me tell you. Them black girls was, with them blonde hair. Them blacks was they was black up in there oh, this episode. Yeah. She's a city girl. <laughs> um, but what was listen though? Listen, Linda. Listen, I knew it wasn't gonna go well. When a little gay baby thought he was gonna punk the dude who had sullied his whole entire man. oath, I was like, he already in a bad way. Look at the man in his eyes. That man said, "You want me to be your whore?" Huh? Yes, nigga. She's like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do." <laughs> what's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> we gonna be uh, uh, <laughs> trying to be in no shit with oranges and cinnamon. Yeah, that's nah. what I said on my review. She's like, "Nigga, I have a dragon. Are you crazy? <laughs> you want me to leave, leave that? <laughs> you want me to leave? Be poor with you? When I have a dragon?" Are you dumb? He's like, we can sail away. Nigga, no. Sit up here and stand outside my door. Give me that little pee when I want it. <laughs> yes. And go no. back and stand outside that door. Shoot, what is wrong with you? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He was He was really like. She was like, boy, I am white. <laughs> you are Dornish. You is a common born. I am I white. I am the queen. And I'm about to get everything I want. And I have a dragon. <laughs> True. Are you crazy? I'm definitely not giving up Nigga a dragon. Nigga got two big joker, big joker, baby joker. You tell me, come, come be with the eight of clubs with me. No. I'm like, so my, if my dragon come with me, they're going to be able to find they me. Because my dragon is coming with me. <laughs> we going to... We, because I can actually take you to the places you've never been on the back of the dragon. Oh my God, I don't need a ship. <laughs> Dragons fly and they have fire. Are you crazy? He's like, do you know how dumb you sound? He's like, I, do, I don't. And then told on his whole self. Told on himself. You weren't even talking about you. She he was, was like, guilt. <laughs> guilt. It is true. He dry snitched on himself. Didn't even realize it. No, he was just like, I just let me die. She was oh. like, oh. It's good. Y'all got to see. Man, it. it's good. Listen, if they got the if they got the source material, the show is fire. Mm-hmm. When they run out of source material and it's just people, they ain't George R R. They ain't got it. It don't work. All right, I'm sorry. We got sidetracked because this show is out of this world. But this pastor, he needs a dragon to set him on fire because <laughs> he is just he is doing team two. Got dang on much, bro. Like, here's the thing that's very frustrating. That's why I love Pastor YPJ. He just be preaching and wearing Yeezys. That's all he do. He do. He do. And, and he be getting mad at people having fake stuff. I would love for him to go viral. But as people, people, the viral stuff, like period, ah, period, uh, period, ah, period, uh, that stuff go far and wide. I didn't, I didn't post that. Me and Melissa were talking about that. They talked about that on Gin and Juice uh, yesterday. I, I have, I have lessened my posting of that stuff. Because them white people, we laugh them, and a lot of time we laugh them right into a bag. Yeah, we be making fun of them, and then the next thing you know, they done got a record deal or on celebrity boxing or only they like they they be monetizing that stuff. Yeah. The world is built for them to monetize the stuff, and we be like, ha ha, you look dumb, and they be like, I'm rich now. We be like, what? What? But also sometimes it's so bad I want to make fun of it. I want her to get some money so she can get some teeth. She ain't got none. She didn't have none. Dentist now, dentist not later. <laughs> dentist now, dentist this never. No. I was like, what is happening on that top row? And she opened up the top row. And said, We're not here. There's nothing. When this bottom lip <laughs> just went out that far, that's what let me know. It was a little drawbridge. There was period <laughs> nothing. That was the it. funniest thing about that video, though. That's <laughs> She got off beat on her own thing. Oh, yeah. How you get off beat just saying period, ah, period, uh. It's a lot. About the eighth time, she was like, period, period, ah, period, ah, shoot. <laughs> it was, she had to focus on the lace front not moving, the eyelashes. She had to, she had to catch she her breath. See. She had to suck the saliva back up into her mouth that the teeth would have <laughs> usually stopped. It was a lot that she had to focus on. So I get it. Period, ah, period, uh. Period, uh. All right, moving on. This, I just saw this morning, and I'd be like, what is the world? What, Kevin? What? FDA warns that NyQuil marinated chicken is dangerous. Oh. Wait, wait a minute. What Dang it. Somebody this? I put this on the docket this morning. I just saw it as I was getting ready to leave. Kids on TikTok are marinating. It's called sleepy chicken. Mm-hmm. They're oh. marinating their, their chicken breasts. It's great before bed. In NyQuil and then cooking it. And the FDA is like, you, you should not heat up drugs. One, it makes them more potent. Two, the fumes can be dangerous. And I just see this stuff and I'd be like, 
Do you do you think God be like, y'all are, y'all are dumb? Who, y'all are dumb. The picture of it of the of the chicken, the green Nyquil with the too. chicken just flowing, and Nyquil is disgusting. Gross. It's disgusting. So I don't, and that they poured a whole. It looked like two or this is lean. Yeah. Baby lean. People so, always gonna come up with creative ways to get high. Chris Chris Rock had a joke about that. He said you, you, there would never been drugs on this earth, and people would. He said the niggas would have put gasoline with a lima bean in a baby bottle and sucked on that and got high. Like we was gonna figure something oh, out. Absolutely. Just I don't know if it's boredom. I don't know what it is, but folk are gonna find a way to get high. And if and if it's gotten too boring getting high one way, they going to find another way. I'm surprised people aren't slathering themselves in NyQuil and then going into like a baking, not a baking, a tanning salon <laughs> and allowing the UV rays to bake it into them. Can you imagine how dumb your family would feel if you died cooking NyQuil marinated chicken? They would say I died of AIDS. They you would. You got to lie. <laughs> they, they are Have going. To lie. They're definitely going to give me you something. You have to lie. I, I would never, if, don't, don't, don't tell them what I was doing. They would rather be like, she got monkey pox <laughs> in her butt and mouth and it seeped to her brain and suffocated her <laughs> than to say, this dumb bitch was over here boiling chicken in NyQuil. Can you imagine how mad you'd be if you came home and saw your kids trying this because they saw it on the, on the talk? I'm going to grab them like the pastor did that woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I'm going to do. In her Dior I'm going to grab them by the back of their head. <laughs> Bullet ch chicken and NyQuil. My kids do stupid stuff, but never that. They're not that. I mean, luckily, Nintendo Switches are enough. Um, distraction for them. Distraction for them. But, boy, like... I wonder who was the first person to record this. Because it only takes one person to have the idiotic idea. It only takes one. And I, going back to time, like, humans, they saw mushrooms on the ground. They were like, I wonder if you can eat this. And somebody ate one. It was poisoned. He died. And somebody else was like, no, you, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Like, we had to figure this stuff out. Absolutely. To, to try it. Now, let me see how it. Let me see how, how you take on it. Oh, no, you did? Yeah. Hey, y'all. Those ones, no bueno. It's like huffing paint. Right, huff and paint. That was a thing. People that was were a buying, big thing. Get it, putting it in a bag, and to get high. Aerosol cans, potpourri. Remember, you couldn't even get potpourri. I don't remember the night because it has aerosol. They was oh those type of potpourri. Yeah, I was thinking of like oh man, no no no. The I was aerosol. like I don't. What were people oh, doing? Like, they were crushing it up and snorting it. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> like what is that? The type of discoveries that people make is crazy, but not as good as Discovery Pop Normal on Paranormal. That's a show. That's huh? a television program? Pop Paranormal is a horror movie and TV review show hosted by geek couple Karama Horn and Chuck Collins. Mm. Karama Horn, a.k.a. The Blurred Girl which is like black and nerd put together. I love it. Mm, uh, we'll talk more about that later. A cultural critic parked at a intersection of pop culture and diversity. She has a novel set in the Black Panther universe coming out in the fall of 2022. I'll Sick. Hey, and her husband, Chuck Collins, comic book artist, podcaster, and horror cons... Uh, well, I don't know how to say that word. What is it? Connoisseur. Connoisseur. <laughs> Well, I was I like, there's a lot that. of syllables. Connoisseur. Each week, they dissect their favorite horror and paranormal classics, deep cuts, and current films and TV faves that have left a lasting impact on or are currently changing pop culture. So some of the uh, things that they'll be covering in their episodes are movies like The Shining, Nope, Halloween, Jacob's Ladder, and Stranger Things. I really want to hear how they cover Nope because I had a lot of questions about that movie after I watched it. I don't know if y'all saw uh, Jordan Peele's uh, Nope. There, It was very different for a horror film. Yeah. And I can see how definitely there is a intersection of pop culture in there, especially Absolutely. even with the casting um, and diversity, obviously, because a lot of times, y'all know, they don't be like to put people mm -hmm. of color inside horror films unless we about to die at the very beginning. So uh, I would definitely love to see and hear what they're going to be talking about in regards to no. So um, you guys check it out. 
Listen to Pop Paranormal on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Pull up on them. Check out the program, the podcast program for you. Let's skip to this story. Speaking about nerds. All right. I want to play this video. Went viral on Twitter last week. Let me just cue it up. Make sure this is on. Okay. All right. Here we go. What's your thoughts, Angel? Okay. I feel like I have to. Oh, it says HBC. The, the, Sadly, the thing that you can't see, I thought it was re- would be read by the TikTok. It says HBCUs are filled with nothing but insecure bullies. bullies. All right. And this is this young man's take. Sadly, I feel like I have to agree with what she said in a video that I just did. It's my first semester at an HBCU, and I, somebody like me, you know, I'm nerdy, I like anime, I like computers, I build computers, like that. Like, just normal things somebody my age would be into, but niggas on campus, they see that shit as, like, not normal for a black person to be in. Oh, into. Like, they yeah. consider that white shit. Like, and by what I mean by, like, I'm into games. Like, I'm not into only playing Madden and 2K and sports games. Like, I play games like Jump King, Omer, like that. And they see that as weird and white. And they don't associate with people who do that. And another thing, I don't have their particular fashion sense. Like, I don't like wearing skinny jeans with, like, a vape shirt or some shit. Or, like, I don't like wearing fitted out Nike tech shit like that. And I don't collect J's all the time. But they see me walk on campus dressed in, like, baggy clothes and maybe, like, a pink shirt and shit like that. They're just like, oh, what? That nigga is gay. Like, he doesn't dress like us. And the homophobia on campus is, like, a big-ass deal, too. Like, it's a huge issue. Because, like, I'm pansexual, and I'm usually very open about my sexuality with people. I don't usually hide it. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm pansexual. But I don't feel welcome enough on Oh, you get it. That, the video cuts off there, but, but you get the thing. Now, full disclosure, neither Angel nor, nor I nor Josh went to HBCUs. Uh, not for the reasons you think. Uh, people usually think we think that they're better, or PWI people think they're better, or their schools are better than HW, HBCUs. Mm-hmm. More often than not, at least in my case, people stay in the state they're in, mm-hmm. or they have the money to go to uh, the state that they go, the school that they go to. Yeah, I was in Washington. I need the in-state tuition. Ain't no HBCUs on the West Coast. No, you got gosh. to get to, I believe, Texas. Yep, for Texas the first for one. The yep, uh, <clears throat> it was cheaper to live with my parents, mm-hmm. go home, eat on the weekends, than it was to move. I wish I could have went. My sister-in-law went, and she's still paying uh, Spelman for that experience. She mm-hmm. wouldn't change it. Uh, yeah. And uh, the University of Kentucky paid Angel, I think it was $300,000 to go there or something like that. <laughs> they Cash. paid me a lot. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, but we is black. And wow, the... wow. <laughs> oh, to do that. That's why they paid me. But we is black. We is black. What I wanted to talk about more than bullying at HBCUs, can, since I can't speak to that, bullying of nerdy people from black people. First thing I want to say, in my opinion, it has never been a better time to be a black nerd than now. RDC World, Mark and uh and the gang, all they do is play video games, watch anime, make videos about anime stuff, and it'd be a whole bunch of black and other people who watch anime thoroughly enjoy that. Uh, Long Beach Griffey, big anime, talks about One Punch Kid or One Punch Man. I don't watch that much anime. I just watched Dragon Ball Z. I didn't even know that was anime at the time. It was just a dope cartoon. Mm-hmm. Uh. Back in the day, when I was in high school, if you was black and nerdy and into that stuff, Dungeons and Dragons, you absolutely got made fun of. Um, you shopped at Hot Topic. And the thing is, in, in my estimation, you got made fun of for a lot of things. For all of things. For everything got made fun of. I got made fun of for having, uh, we call them bobos, but not the cool shoes. shoes. Yeah, Bobos. Oh. Remember that song? They make your feet feel fine. Nope. But anyway, uh, I feel like it's the greatest time to be a blurred. There's so many cool blurs. But to this man, 
he's not cool blurred boy. They don't respect him on campus. And obviously, I'm not disagreeing with what he feels like his experience, his experience is. Is. I don't know what school he went to, but I thought it was cool now. Maybe it's not cool. I wonder, I do wonder what his experience was like before going into an HBCU. What was his, what was his environment like? Was mm. it one where he was surrounded by black people at that time? Or is this HBCU experience his first time being oh, in an question. environment mm. where it's mainly black people? Good question. Um, I do think we as a culture have been known to, and not just our culture, white folk do it too. Yeah. Um, and when things don't seem to be what we consider to be the norm, mm -hmm. right? We, instead of Instead of engaging in our own in curiosity, our own curiosity about it, yeah. we shun it. Yes. So I can absolutely believe that like folk are like, what is you doing? Absolutely. I'm also pretty sure that there's a tribe of folk that are just like him on that campus. That's just what I'm saying. Because we're not a monolith. That's yeah. that is that's the one thing I feel like you do experience at uh at least from my family members not many of them that went to hbcus can say that they got to experience was they not only got to experience the side of black culture where you are getting to be around black people which is very which is not normal for most folk unless they live in a very black uh heavy demographic but also they get to see themselves represented because usually they're the one and only where 1, they come, come from right yeah so <clears throat> I can absolutely believe that there is an overwhelming amount of people in his experience of HBCUs that don't see him as just being a black dude, but they see him for all of his, all of what they would call his like weird attributes. But I'm pretty sure there's also a tribe that exists for him there. So it's kind of like a two edged sword. I, which happens a lot in anime. They have swords. <laughs> Uh, Young Deuces in the Patreon, he's a blurred. Pat, as he mentioned, Roxy, like there's so many. Roxy Hayes, uh, Cle low key, being a fan of Game of Thrones and Lord of the Rings, that is fantasy stuff. That's big Dungeons and Dragons. Dog, I be all, and Zay Zay likes Dungeons, I be all, and let me tell you what, not only do I watch Game of Thrones, I host a live uh, after the show and talk about it with other people, all black people mostly that like it, some white people. I watch Emergency Awesome. I watch Alt Shift X. I be watching stuff like, what is this? All the Valyrian swords in no. Westeros. I be like, click. <laughs> what are those? Who's the best fighter in all the Game of Thrones? Ooh, click. Yeah. I feel like Jamie Lannister probably or Oberyn, but he was just not focused. I mean, none of this is real. But it's so interesting. Star Wars, yeah. big nerd stuff. And I'm still regular black. I think black people, we be a lot of things. We do. We like pumpkin pie. We don't grow up on Anita Baker. We pee sitting down. Wait. There's wait all kinds of. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 we no, all. Accurate. We just were saying black people are not a monolith. We're not. But you're just naming stuff that has nothing to do with your blackness. There is tribes. There's all kind of <laughs> church kids. Found my tribe. Likes black women. Found my tribe. <laughs> <laughs> We, we we there's so many things now one that some people said is is that boy a freshman he didn't say and i don't know he I looked kind of young but he might have just got there like yeah. just got week. there could have just got there and listen all children look like they're five years old to me now <laughs> college kids look like they should be oh, in high school are. or middle school they absolutely i don't even think about that i said boy when i was 15 16 i thought i could live on my own i know these adults were like boy you can't even wipe good no i look wrong they were like, you did. They were like, you the manager of the apartment complex? <laughs> yes. You did. Yes, I am. When you show me that picture, you look like you was about to run the assembly. Oh, school. absolutely. <laughs> I was grown. I was grown. So if he's only, if he is a freshman, yeah, they said he is. If he oh, is a, a freshman? freshman, he ain't been, he's only been on campus for a but month. Less than six months. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Oh, school just started then. It just then. started. Last week. Yes. Oh, school. we're in September. Yes, school just started. So uh, this is why I say I'm positive there is a tribe for him. And I also think those people, hopefully those people who are being bullies to him, uh, they might have. So here's the difference. Those people who are probably being bullies are, have probably came from communities where 
it was very much so either you fit yeah. in this or because I, I do believe it's when I look at black kids who grew up in majority white neighborhoods and most of their classmates are white, mm-hmm. the type of stuff they got into might not so much have a strong connection to what we think of as black culture. Yes. So it might be things like, especially growing up when we grew up, not so much now. I feel like kids have access to everything now. It doesn't really matter where you grew up at. Right. But like, so if I'm into a bunch of stuff that does not seem black, they'll be like, you a white kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You, you absolutely <clears throat> Or if you're white not kid. good at sports. Right. Where when you grow up in an extremely black uh, culture, if you're not somebody who uh, goes to church, if you're not into sports, if you can't sing, if you can't do the things that black folk are supposed to be good at, mm. then you become an outsider. So you grow up thinking this is the definition. And so when you go to then an HBCU where you're getting – Black kids who grew up around white kids, you're getting black kids yeah. who grew up internationally. It can be a little bit of a culture shock, shock for even those people to be like, oh, women, you allowed to be black and you pansexual? Yeah. When the heck did they which start doing is, that? Which one is pans? You like you anything. You like pancakes? Oh, okay. Shut up. <laughs> you like pans. <laughs> you it's like just pots. you don't have no... It doesn't... You like humans. You just like matter. holes. It could be... However you. that hole come at you, you just like them. Huh? It could be trans. Holes and it nipples. It could be... The, it, you could be cisgender. It don't matter which end of the spectrum you on. You got stuff. I got stuff. Listen, so I think Clarissa in the chat said this. She said, how you getting bullied in college? And that, I actually had that thought because to me, college can just be a uh, dorm or apartment class college back home. is mind your business at its elite form. Yeah. I thought like, <clears throat> listen, if you trying to mix in, I, I, it's much easier to get bullied in high school. There's nowhere to go. But in college, if I basically hung out with Melissa most of the time and a few other black people, but that that uh, campus was huge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the black people had one little section of the hub was like the student center. We had like, it wasn't even official. It was just black folks sat there and that was it. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of this, I, this is not in the document. I wanted your thoughts on this. This went viral. And speaking about HBCUs, black girl, goes to USC and she created a majorette section for USC. I believe it was USC and it went viral on Twitter. I was like, Oh, that's cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Create some majorettes at USC. But then black people was like, no, you don't get to take a piece of HBCU and take it to a PWI. If you want that experience, you go down to that. No, HBCU. Just let her do whatever. Cause I wish I had the idea. <laughs> I wish. That's one of the biggest parts of HBCU that I am so frustrated. Yeah. I will watch videos of majorettes. You talking about how you'll look up knives and stuff? That's about to cuss. Cuss, Angel. No, it's a new day. Uh, oh, we didn't even tell the regular uh, people. Uh, is, is, is it a new day for you yet? Yeah. I don't give up. Yeah. Okay, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, anyway, Angel, as you were saying. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, no, uh-uh. Nope. You can, Nada. You, you're okay with it? Absolutely. I wish I would have did it. I've been wow 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 I would have been doing all of it. <laughs> Somebody made a good point. It was like Beyonce didn't even go to college and she had a whole homecoming whole big, HBU bad, HBCU homecoming. I mean she had and almost the, sorority. Yes. I mean not almost. It was like her own personal sorority. With that Delta real big on in the, the biggest stage <laughs> in music festivals. Dog. I, that was the first and last time I watched an artist audience, stream. It's primary Oh yeah! Oh, absolutely! Oh, yeah. That lift every voice and sing. They were like, "Oh my God, this ballad! <laughs> this ballad! I didn't see this in the playbook. Yeah. Who wrote this? Celine Dion? What is this? They were excited. I mean, if if that's the case, that means we can't have step shows. Like we, but we black. It wasn't like she was teaching it to white girls, right? It was them five little men. I love Mitch Rats, by the way. I do. I want it to be one. They be like, they about to break that neck when they go here. Mm. I'd be like, you, your neck's still good? Uh, oh, you know who I like? I think it's Alabama a and I watch these, I watch these uh, high schoolers from Miami. One of my sorors is their coach, Super, super Girl. Them girls be, they uh, walk. What's Alabama? Alabama State Honeybees. Kev, you be knowing. They walk, bent back. Yes! With their with they pelvis forward. With they walking with their ovaries. I love it! Let me tell you what. Alabama State Honeybees. They got big girls. They, I don't know if they're majorettes. I don't know what they are. They might be majorettes. It looks like they might be. But they Usually the get, big girls is the other line. 
But go ahead. They go in. But listen, black folks, we going to be black wherever we are. Well, mm-hmm. We got to create our own space. Listen, the land we are in was not designed for us. No. Nah. So we are going to find community. That's where that's where the big thing about church came from. It was community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we're going to try to find our stuff. And everybody can't go to HBCUs. Listen. Some people can't afford it. Some people can't. Some people's parents is only paying. Some people get scholarships. It ain't always we didn't want to go. We think we're better than. Listen, let me tell you. Even though the world will try to tell you that regular college. If I thought UK wouldn't have kicked me off campus for being up there in a white leotard with my cheeks hanging out. I would have been out there every game. Just shaking my cheeks. I am proud of who, who is the girl. I'm proud of her. Uh, at USC? See. At, USC. At the University of Southern California. Southern California. Baby. Institute. That's where Josh wanted to go. Trojans. Yeah, I'm I about to go and watch her. You, y'all better hope they never let somebody get in their doctorate be a majorette. Because my 40-something-year-old ass will be out there. <laughs> yes. Kevin. Here's a video if you want to see. Let me see. Her name is Princess something. It's, I thought it was great. Oh, and they got the, oh! Angel's all in. She's all in. I didn't expect her to get this excited about it. Oh, my, yes. <laughs> I, y'all, y'all have no idea. The reason, the only reason why I wanted to go to, even though I don't think they have majorettes, I can't remember, to fam you was to be in the band to be a majorette. <laughs> you was going to go to fam you? That was one, that was the, one of my top Really? Because that's how bad I wanted to have the black band experience. <sighs> the Rattlers. You was going to be that girl butt naked taking pictures by Absolutely. That Cheeks out. <laughs> I've been like, I did that in 2002. <laughs> I got a, I, I took the picture and got a painting of it th- via Paint My Life. Oh! Or paint Your Life is paint what it's called. Paint Your Life! Ever wish you could bring the whole family together no matter where they are and even if they've never been together before, with Paint Your Life you can. Paint Your Life will create a portrait with anyone you want together want a painting of your children with the grandparents they never met or have a lost loved one added to an event so it feels like as though they were there with paint your life anything is possible get a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo at a truly affordable price or combine photos of people or places you love into one painting choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them until every detail is perfected User-friendly platform makes it easy to order a custom-made, hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. It's fast. You can receive a portrait in less than two weeks. And as little as, excuse me, in as little as two weeks. Send any picture, yourself, your children, family, a special place, someone you... Uh, you loved who isn't around anymore a cherished pet or send multiple photos to create a painting of a loved one who weren't together in person uh one customer had a painting made of his mother in uh with the golden girls that's so cute <laughs> you can add a handwritten message to your painting to make it an extra special <laughs> makes the perfect birthday anniversary or wedding gift I am definitely about to be doing paint my life, paint your life. Excuse me. I know you've done it before. I have. I've got some hanging up in my home. In your home. I have a really good idea. I can't really say just in case the person who I plan on doing it for is watching bad. I think it's an amazing gift. Uh, I love, I actually love, 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 love portraits. And I do think this is a beautiful way to let someone know that you love them or to feel close to someone who's no longer here. At paintyourlife.com, there's no risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guarantee. And right now, as a limited time offer, get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off and free shipping. To get the special offer, text the word SK, SK. to 87204. That's yeah, SK. Yeah. SK. To 87204. Text SK. SK. To 87204. Paint your life. Celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates apply. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms. Again, text, terms. text SK. SK. To 87204. Zero four. Is that it? Yeah, we don't have two in the middle. We don't have two in the middle? Nope, we just got one at the end. Just, just two in the... Just kidding. Two in the pink one and one in the stink. So what do we decide? Black people will bully you anywhere. As a young freshman, you will find your way as you go along. Find your tribe. You will find your way. Oh, I think you'll definitely find your tribe and those people that he's feeling bullied by. They're just insecure right now. And they, I, I do think that black people, for the most part, hopefully now this generation that's in college 
they do kind of mellow out of from that and realize like there's there's no reason to to be making someone else feel weird about themselves if they're comfortable with it. Listen, I I wanted my sons to both play basketball. Isaiah is far more into. I mean, he's into films and stuff, which is great. That's part of me. But he's into Dungeons and Dragons, and I didn't really know what that was. And then I saw Stranger Things, and I was like, "Oh, you're Hellfire Club boy." Listen, do what you want to do. And then, like in his tenth grade year, he tried out for the basketball team. Well, his school is small. You sign up, and yeah. he's on the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now he's got me working on his jump shot with him. Josiah is a soccer player. Uh, they both like anime. I'm like, man, this is your life. I live your life. L listen, I used Lil to want my kids to live my life, but this they can't be me. Luckily, little Marcus is living some of mine, and that works. But at little Marcus's uh, new I school, love that. I love that TikTok. By the way, oh my ah. god, that was pure. That's what, he's William Wonka. He is. Stop it, Willy he's Wonka. William Wonka. Willy Wonka. He's Big Will. Starts the whole starts the whole musical. He's the first thing you see. Is he gonna do the little barrel roll? I don't know what he's gonna do, but <sighs> Mama's gonna be there. You uh, know, Willy Wonka is. I love that movie. So do I. I got a problem with with a Grandpa though. Oh well, he's a bit of much. He's he, a bit much. All you you've been bro bedridden for how and long? Now you mm -hmm. can skip. You can skip, jump. I do mean, all your dog on legs work good right. now. Oh yeah, he got a golden ticket. All of a sudden, you don't want cabbage soup no more. Uh uh. You can get up. All the other ones stayed broke. Listen, rich rich makes it real everything a lot better. Boy, the possibility was, of being rich. So the possibility. I was so upset with Uncle Charles, Uncle or Grandpa. What was his name? It was was it Grandpa's or Uncle? Yeah, Charlie was his name. Grandpa I think Joe. it was Grandpa. Grandpa Joe sound Grandpa Joe. Let's that say sound it about is. right. What I was saying though is Lil Marcus, I was asking him, who you made friends with? He was like, Well, I'm friends with pretty much everybody on the football team. I was like, Really? He was like, Yeah, he was naming them off. I said, Does that make you want to play football? He's like, Absolutely not. I'm gonna <laughs> do this cross country with me and the three other white guys, and uh <laughs> we're gonna Listen, be just fine. He said, You're not gonna hit me. Oh, yeah, he's not hit it for it. He's like, How am I then gonna do my video games? He has his list. <laughs> He has his video game. His lisp? Yeah, my baby got a lisp. Oh, you said he has it. Yeah, he's got this his friend too. He's got his lisp. I got a lisp. Yeah. It'd be it'd be here. And the girl's still checking for him, so he's fine. Uh huh. L M. Shut up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward. Brett Favre. Boy. White white men, they they when they do crimes, it be crimes. Yeah. Brett Favre, former Mississippi governor, helped Brett Favre obtain welfare funds for a university volleyball stadium, oh. Tex show, where his daughter plays volleyball. I believe it's at Southern Miss. Uh, let me see if I can find the text. They, gave, they also gave Brett Favre a uh, million dollars to speak at certain things, 600000 in one, 500000 in another. And he never he never spoke. He never showed up. He said, uh, and his text, and boy, when, he, when I tell you this text lets you know you never committed a crime in your life or done something illegal or stupid. He, he texts the lady, if you were to pay me, is there any way the media can find out where it came from and how much? And I'm reading this on ESPN. So the answer to that question the, is, is a yes. yes. <laughs> is a yes. What? So they siphoned off welfare funds Sent it to the university from the poorest state in the United States. Poorest, yes. Poorest state where in Jackson now they don't even have drinkable water. And the governor was like, it's a good day not to be in Jackson. And I was like, bro, this is your state. Why would you say that about the state you govern? People be just I mean, why, why How could you fix your mouth? You are the governor of that state. He's like, well, I'm glad I am not in that city, though. No. Ugh disgusting i'm saying like and to build a volleyball stadium where your daughter plays yeah because he's like this is her like and that's like how much was it like 70 mil uh five million oh i would what, what i see something for 70 something i would have thought 70 mil a whole volleyball oh, no, no. stadium i'm like five million no it was seven. Like state auditors yeah I'm like, oh okay state auditors determined nonprofit leaders misspent at least 77 million dollars in welfare funds in the largest case of public fraud in mississippi history that makes it even worse oh but he only the diverted the, the, five the million the five million was for the bo the volleyball no but everything else of misspent funds that couldn't have gone to water 77 million well the five million i'm sure if it ain't fixed the water problem it could have helped yes People don't care. They don't. People do Just wreck like I don't even, not even trying to hide it. 
Brett Favre, I used to like him as a quarterback. He was tough. His dad, his dad died. He played on Monday Night Football. Since then, oh, hold on. Kimberly says she transferred to LSU after the report. To go send some money there? To no, Louisiana State University. Louisiana State. She said, get me up out of Mississippi. <laughs> Take your behind back there and play volleyball in the stadium your dad stole the funds for. The least you could do is serve the ball in the stadium that was stolen with the she with the money. Like, she was like, yo, they don't have good water there. I don't want to play. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> Yo, man. listen, this is what makes it so bad. Jackson, is it Jackson City? Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi. Guess what the population of black people there is? The 99%. It's 82.5% black. Is, is that the highest in any state in the United States? I don't know. Uh, what city has the most black people? What city? And that's the capital of Mississippi. Jackson is the capital of Mississippi. Uh, I just... New York has the largest number of black folk. Is that by number or by population, like density, percentage wise? Percentage oh, wise, want, if, oh highest percentage. What yeah, city has the most black. Percentage? It probably got to be. It has to be Mississippi. It's got to be the South. No, it's not Mississippi. It's the place that makes the most. Sense. Louisiana, Alabama. Wait a minute. It's saying, oh no 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 no. It's saying it's Memphis, but that don't sound right. Memphis has the highest percentage of black per capita. Pro per capita? Maybe. There's a lot of black people in Memphis. Mm. Memphis, the black people are very different to me. It's a what whole, do you mean? Memphis black folk make me feel Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is this? What? Why? Why do what? I not feel as black as you all? No, I'm looking at the same article. It says Memphis, Tennessee. I'm, the Memphis, I mean, and I love it. I was just like, oh. I have some learning to do. It felt like, it, and I felt not just Caucasian. I felt like I was from England in Caucasian. <laughs> Somebody said their therapist is in Memphis. I'm oh, telling you, Memphis is different. Memphis. It's number one is Memphis. Number two, Bat Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Number three, New Orleans. Number four, Atlanta, Sandy Springs, Alpharetta, or maybe they're tied. Columbia, Virginia Beach. First of all, these are all the cities that I do well in when my shows. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Birmingham, Richmond, Baltimore, Columbia, Towson, Greensboro, DC. I'm just saying, Memphis. I it's I would feel like there would be more white folk there. But this I'm telling you, this explains Justin Timberlake to me so much so. <laughs> right. Why he misspeaks, why he has the audacity to think he can talk on our affairs. DC, beat your feet. <laughs> Is he from Tennessee or Memphis? He's from Memphis. I, oh, I thought he was from Tennessee. I didn't know he was from Memphis. Let me see. Uh, personally, I'll be looking it up to see, see if my computer says something different. Justin. I know him from Tennessee because JC and the Tennessee kids. Memphis. Oh, so Memphis. Yeah, that's what. Listen, I used to be in love with that white boy. So did Melissa. Yes. Oh, pink nips. Mm -hmm. Pink go, nips. There you go. These you brown think, nips. I was going to be just fine. Cinnamon nip. He was my crossover. It made literally well, the first time I was in Memphis, I was like, Justin Timberlake makes so much sense to me <laughs> now. No wonder he is so confused. <laughs> Cause he be confused. I'll be like, oh boy, what is you doing? He, they, got, they, got him, they got him in the airport there. Don't they? I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't been to Memphis in since 2019, I believe. So. So if the fact that Memphis has the greatest percentage population of black folk and Justin's white ass came from out of there. <laughs> I understand why he had cornrows there for a minute. Listen, he had that ramen noodle on the top of his head. He did. It was cute. Melissa wanted him to, before they got, they got married, she wanted him to marry Kelly Kelly Rowland. She told me. I said, she but did they, was, she was like, no. I was like. Was, she was just like, y'all kiss. Get together. Get to <laughs> like, make it. Why? Mouse. She's like, I just feel like they'll make a good couple. Now, this. We would have been together if I made the Mickey Mouse Club. Had I made it? Unfortunately. You had, your son would have been like, he's biracial. Shop da dee da da. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my beautiful children would not exist. They would be little. Marcus Tanksley would have been in Kentucky still. I know. If you would have made that Mickey Mouse Club. I, yeah, me and Justin would have been together. 
together together but the <laughs> lord knew that's not what i was supposed to happen it wasn't he knew he knew he was going to uh, throw janet jackson under the bus mm-hmm. he would have threw you under mm-hmm. if he threw janet jackson under you know you ain't stand no chance i know all right a little fun thing that i put on twitter and got a lot of heat but i'm, I'm not heat but uh responses i'm curious to hear josh's and angels if you could this is actually melissa's question by the way if you could only listen to five albums forever what would you choose no greatest hits no compilations beyonce 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 you better beyonce, not beyonce you wouldn't angel would. five albums angel of beyonce no you wouldn't yes you would really put five beyonce that i would put so there's five. so many other ones beyonce 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 shaka khan are we done now? I'm done. What Beyonce albums? Okay, let me tell you. Maybe I'll do a Destiny Child. Oh, uh, I don't God. know. I don't know. I don't know why you thought it was going to be something else. Because it's forever. Who who else you think I want to listen to? Waka Flocka. I don't need to hear him to have him. <laughs> I don't. I don't need it. Before you tell me the ads, I mean, well, dang. Before you tell me the album. With HelloFresh, you get far fresh pre portion ingredients and seasoned recipes delivered right to your doorstep. (laughs) Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy. HelloFresh is here to make your hectic fall weekends a little bit easier and a lot more delicious. Their quick and easy meals include 20 minute meals, low prep, and easy cleanup options. Take the stress out of mealtime with time saving no fuss recipes ready in a snap. Enjoy the freshest fall flavors. Every HelloFresh recipe includes ripe, just pick produce that travels from the farm to your door in less than a week. Yesterday, I made these barbecue um, flatbread, I want to call them pizzas. It had mozzarella, it had um, car- caramelized red onions, it also had some, oh, what was it? Was it uh, green peppers? These things were so freaking good. The kids killed these mm-hmm. things. Um, perfect as our weather is getting finally a little bit colder here in California. And it was so quick to put together that I actually cooked another meal because I was like, I want some more to eat. And the kids are about to eat up all this thing on flatbread because it's so good. So I made these, uh, great raviolis that had a great, uh, really creamy buttery sauce on them. And I was able to get both of these meals cooked in less than an hour. So that lets you know, in less than 30 minutes, I was able to cook both meals in one night because they're so both good. Both meals in one night? In one night. Woo, what a day. It was delicious, okay? Mm. There is also something new on the menu from family-friendly to fit and wholesome and even veggie recipes. There's something to please everyone. You can easily customize your meals with HelloFresh, oh, excuse me, Hello Custom by swapping proteins or sides upgrading to choice Ooh. proteins or even adding protein mm, to a veggie meal. Proteins. It's never been easier to eat your way. Green Chef in every plate are now owned by HelloFresh and with yep. a wide array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I love being able to switch between brands and now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount on us. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK65 SK65 and use code SK65 SK65 for 65% off plus free shipping? What? Go to HelloFresh.com slash SK65. SK65. And use code SK65. SK65. For 65% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Okay. All right. Top five Beyonce albums. Okay. We're going to do Dangerously in Love. Solo debut, right? Uh Uh-huh. Yes. When she's in the chandelier. Yep. Boop. This is about to be where it gets hard. I think I want to go ahead and take Renaissance just because I'm still in love with it right now. So it'll be hard for me to not have a couple of the songs. Uh, we're going to go with Beyonce, the self-title. Now, where, where where it's going to get hard for me is if I'm going to do B-Day or Lemonade. Mm. I don't know which one, but one of yeah. them is coming. Okay. And then I'm going to do Shaka Khan's... Let me tell you which the album name is. Shaka Khan album. Oh, see, a part of me wants the Shaka Khan when she was with Rufus versus Shaka Khan. They got solo. some hits together. Ha! You can only listen to all. I want you to be clear. This is for the, the rest of album. your life. For the rest of your life. Yeah. Okay. You don't think I can listen to Beyonce? I've been listening let's to her all of my let's life. Let's expand it to 10. Is it still all Beyonce? 
sing the rest of her albums and some Destiny's <laughs> Shop. I might throw a wild gospel on there. Oh, no, compilation. Oh, well, then no, then I'm good. Oh, a Mary Mary. I'll throw, I'll throw a Mary Mary album so on So you there. can cry to it? Mm, so I can praise. All right, I'll tell you mine. I don't know why you thought I was going to do something. I really why thought. Why don't you think you know me now? I just. Would you? I'm going to throw in some Luther, then give me a Kendrick <laughs> Lamar album. I should have been surprised. I don't care about any of that. My bad. All right. For me. I, I said a different answer on Twitter. I'm changing it. This is the truth. First, well, in no particular order, but I'm just naming this first. Tone. Nope. Uh, out the box. I know you talk about this a lot. I love it. It's perfect, and it's a double album, so I got plenty of songs to listen to. Also, Pages of Life by Fred Hammond. Pristine body of work. So you're just going to be a Christian boy, Christian, Christian boy. Christian boy, oh, Christian boy. Those are my two gospel albums. My third album would be Good Kid, Mad City by Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. I just Lamar, love that heaven. album. It's great storytelling at its finest. That's what, three? Uh, four would be probably Music Soul Child, Just Listen. Okay, I'll give you that one. I That's love a good that one. Album. That's a good one, Kevin. That's now. just <laughs> now that would be an honorable mention on mine. If they said just you listen, uh, just they said listen. you couldn't have Beyonce. You can only have two of them. And I think my last one would be "Off the Wall" by Michael Joseph Jackson. I love that album. If I expanded to ten, I would probably. Trying to think of the albums that are just flawless Beyonce. to me. No, Beyonce. I'm not putting the Beyonce song to listen to forever. Beyonce. Beyonce. The Rebirth of Kirk Franklin. Oh my God. <laughs> I love Kevin. I love them. You are ridiculous. I love them. You are ridiculous. <clears throat> Coloring Book by Chance the Rapper. Perfect album. Did you to get me. some Chance the Rapper on there? Why would you do that to Chance? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, go ahead. Ah! Uh, Kanye West. My oh, late registration. Fantasy. I don't know. They're so good. I think my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy might be my favorite. Uh-huh. That's what, nine? The Mighty Clouds of Joy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, I don't even know how many is that is. That's enough. Eight or nine. I don't even know. You put. You pick ten? Yeah, he, we expanded it to ten, but you can go for five, Josh. Because he thought that it was just going to get Beyonce that off of my list. That woman just said, how many albums does Beyonce have? Let me see here. She Beyonce. has four. She's got to be close. She's probably like, no, she's oh, be solo No, no, I was saying the album four. Oh, uh, okay. Well, Crazy in Love or Dangerously in Love is her solo. I think six. Five or six. Yeah. It, it, are you, You're not including the Carters? No. She has, a, oh, what if she also, oh, because we ain't going to do. Um, oh, Confessions will be a day. good album. She a home day. I said home day. God dang. Confessions will be on there. Homecoming. One. Two, Actually, Confessions three, might five, be. Six. Yeah, I would take all six of her albums. Oh, you know seven. what album I would. I, I would take all seven. One. Wait a minute. I am Sasha Fierce. Thank What's you. on that? That's when she's, it's just her face. No, what songs Halo. are Halo. If I were a boy. Oh, okay. I'll take off Confessions and put Chalumbo on. What's Chalumbo? Chalumbo? Jine Aiko's album 2020. Oh, you know, I don't know the names of you. It's such a Ch- jerk. Josh, Chalumbo. Enough, Kevin. Enough. Or 2088, maybe Sell Out or Selling Souls or Sold Out or Trip. One of those. All so good. you such a jerk. Yeah, Beyonce, 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 Beyonce. <laughs> you can't. Beyonce. I don't want that. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. That turns into her greatest hit. I don't want that. <laughs> I right, don't Josh. want out of the box. G units <laughs> beg for mercy. Hey, oh, come what? on. Come on, smile and want to get to know you a- enough. I can G run those back for I'm mercy. I'm here. Out the game, Come on, Josh. Stone 101. G units beg for mercy. Was that 2008? I'm here for 2007 it. 2007-ish. Great time, man. Are you being Great for real? Great time in music. I'm those never... two songs, no, no, no. For real, though, those two songs are fantastic. 
I'm here for it. You ain't got to explain. What's next, Josh? Justin Timberlake's Justified. One of the illest debut albums for a solo artist coming out of a group, with the exception of Beyonce. Let's let's pay respect, yeah. of course. I, I still can't believe that they didn't think Beyonce was going to work as a solo artist. They didn't think Justin Timberlake was going to work as a solo, solo artist. How? I don't know why they didn't think Justin How do they Timberlake. think Beyonce wasn't going to work or Justin Timberlake? Mm-hmm. Justin, I, that's a crazy one. Go they ahead. They thought it was going to be JC. Go ahead. Um, Is that your favorite Justin Timberlake album? It's it's always back and forth. You know what? He has, 2020 experience he has a really part good, one is he has a really good freaking catalog. amazing. He does have a good catalog. Uh, love Sex Sounds and crazy, whatever. Crazy Sexy Love Sounds. Mm-hmm. Crazy Sexy Cool. See, that's oh, what happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's Super what to Sexy me Love that was a good Space. Album too. Crazy Sexy. What is it? See? Yeah. Crazy Sexy Love Songs. It's like Love Sounds. I thought it was Sounds. Super, future Sex Love future Sounds. Future Sex Love Sounds. I, like, like, I know Sex sound. is in there. And cra- we threw Crazy in there and it's not in there. All right, go ahead. What's that, two? That's two. Oh. I'll take, for something nostalgic, I'll take Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. You okay. love that. Josh be into that Marvin Gaye. That's Day. a good one. Josh is doing the best. Um, Josh is 48 in black, by the way. <laughs> exactly. That's why I like it. <laughs> the young Mexican man talking about Marvin Gaye was going to album before his time. We didn't pick albums before our time. No. When did what's going on come well, out? Well, no, I said I would do a Shaka, and my Shaka one would have been before I was born. Mm. That's you. You did. That album came out in 1971, Josh. You were negative 22 that got years old. New, that got nothing new with. I know. I'm just thinking it's very me. impressive that you that you picked that album that was came out 22 years before you were alive. Oh, Off the Wall came out before I was born. Oh yeah, you did. But that been Off the Wall. Um, I was gonna take because we talked about this in the car. I had Off the Wall. Yeah, fantastic album. That's four. That's four. I could do with that. You don't like you don't like it. What's it's your favorite Michael Jackson album? Like it. It's not that I don't like it. It's just if I never heard it again, I wouldn't be like, ah. Oh. Really? Yeah. I would be like that. I'd be two fists. No. Ah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I'll throw something more recent in there. Saba's Care For Me was a really good album. Saba mm-hmm. is the rapper. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. Featured who on The Coloring Book. That's where I know He's him on from. Angels. Angels. I, 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 nah, nah, nah. Mm-hmm. I got my niggas doing front flips. Who's that, Marcus? Mm. Ooh, Big old cell. Nice. I like that color shirt on him. Yeah, Beyonce, Beyonce. But you know Beyonce, what? Honorable Beyonce, mention, Beyonce. I would put Jasmine Sullivan's Hotels in there because I could run that at any time. That's a good. And that, let it sit on repeat. I was trying to say, <laughs> if you had to pick five albums to listen to forever that have come out in the last five years, mm-hmm. that might be... That might be one of my fa- that is one of my favorite R&B albums. And the deluxe just expands on how good the first part was. That's the only way you're going to get somebody else on my list. All right. Came out in the last five years. I definitely agree with Hotels. Uh, we're definitely doing Renaissance. Just oh, okay, of course. Just to let you know. Okay, let me see here. What else has come out? Hold what on. did Janae um, release in the last five years? Albums released... In the last it, Kevin. five years. Chalumbo. Okay, hold on, hold on. I gotta I gotta get some more just so I can let's see here. Y'all gotta actually remind me. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna take hotel. I'm just looking at what I downloaded. Hotels I would absolutely have. Uh I haven't even listened to it fully. I've ooh, if couple. Orange was a place. I don't even know. That's very short though. Ooh, is that, control. Who is that, Frank? Tim's. Oh, Scissor Control was that five years? I think that was sixteen, right? I think no, seventeen. Seventeen. So okay, yeah. I'm taking that then. Oh, I will I'm take. Like, it's gonna be almost all R and B then. Hers debut album was that no, less than five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it came out I'm gonna take her. I'm gonna take Super so, oh, uh, Sonic Soul. What's their name? Get it? I think so. Super su- uh, Silk Sonic. Silk Sonic. Super Sonic, Sonic Soul. Soul. <laughs> mm-hmm. Super Sonic. Oh I'm gonna take man, him. Anderson Pax Malibu. Oh, is that five years? <sighs> That oh, and Flo Millie, oh, why is you here? That might have been 15, but I would, take, uh, I would take Ventura. No, Malibu wasn't that late, Josh, was it? Malibu was 15. I'm going to take Cardi B's. 16. Was it really? Uh, what was Cardi B's album? Invasion of Privacy. Invasion of Privacy. I'm taking Invasion like of Privacy. Did you rock with that like that? Oh, my God. Did you really? Yes, I did. From first track to the end was listening to that thing heavy. Ooh, no, Calvin Harris's Funk too. Waves Volume One was a good time. Who? Calvin Harris. 
Oh yeah, that I was on our uh, tour playlist bounce, a lot. Bounce waves, funk bounce. Uh, Hamilton. I was like, Jay Z's four 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 in the past five years. Yeah, seventeen. I think it was sixteen or seventeen. It feels like it was uh, before that. Uh, oh, you know what I would take? I would take Toby's uh, debut album. <laughs> What's it called? Ooh, Lucky Day Painted. There were some really good albums. Yeah. That came out. R&B. That's why I get so mad when people say R&B is dead. I was like, there's a good four? R&B yeah, album every no, three years. He's, he's focused on every city, three months. He's I focused mean. on City Girls. He got no mm, say in R&B. Toby yeah. from the SWAT, 2017. No, no. Speaking no, of music, real quick, no. y'all saw that Adam Levine stuff. Yeah. He was a wild boy. He was. He was. He he didn't cheat on his wife, but he a TikTok. The girl was like, "This nigga wild." <laughs> You talking about Maroon 5, Maroon Adam Levine. Maroon 5, Adam Levine. She will be loved, all right. Her name was Sumner, Sumner Snow. And basically, he was flirting with her, and then they, like, stopped flirting, and then he randomly hit her up and was like, would you mind if I name my new baby after you? And I'm not joking. She was like, and then apparently somebody was trying to blackmail her or something like that. So she put out the, the DMs between her and Adam Levine. He just released a statement that was like, uh, I had, hold on, let me read it to you. Did he name that baby Sumner? Baby ain't born yet. Oh. He can't do it now. I had a dude I used to talk to name his ba- first baby after me. Really? Mm-hmm. He named him Angel? The, when we were talking, he gave, he told me what my name was in a language that he spoke. And oh. he learned that name in that language. Got and it. then when I found out his baby was on the way, I was like, oh, I heard you got baby on the way. He said, uh... He was like, did you hear what I'm naming her? I said, yes, and that is foul. <laughs> he didn't ask for your permission? No. Adam Levine would never. No. His iOS press release says, a lot of being said about me right now, and I want to clear the air. I use poor judgment in speaking with anyone other than my wife in any kind of flirtatious manner. I did not have an affair. Nevertheless, I crossed the line during a regrettable period in my life. In certain instances, it became inappropriate. I've addressed that and taken proactive steps. Drew me to this with my family. My wife and my family is all I care about in this world. To be this naive and stupid enough to risk the only thing that truly matters to me was the greatest mistake I could ever make. I will never make it again. I take full responsibility. We will get through it, and we will get through it together. together. Uh, yeah, that was that was terrible. Terrible. Emotional affair is an affair, DJ says. It is. All right. We love y'all. We're getting ready to do the bald and the beautiful. The bald and Patreon, beautiful. tap in. Give us about, I don't know, 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. We'll see you then in San Jose, pull up Thursday, Kansas City, pull up next week. You guys, I'm introducing, Tony Baker has his ashy list. What I thought that was a great idea. I'm introducing Kevon Stage's RPI index. That is the return probability index, or RP index, I guess. RPI index is repetitive. How well your city sells determines how likely I am to return. If you sell well or if you have great energy, it's a proprietary formula. Uh, if you can sell poorly and have great energy, it still might not come. But if you, but if you sell well. So all five people, yeah, <laughs> come in. <laughs> if, you, if you sell well and have terrible energy, that also sucks. There are certain cities like that that I won't name. Uh, there's a city in England. That was like that. Oh, oh no. um, they so well and had terrible energy. Mm-hmm. They don't know what the energy is supposed to be. No, it was too prim and proper. Yeah. But maybe now that the queen is dead. They the queen is up. dead. They can loosen up a little bit. All right. <laughs> we'll see y'all soon. Bye. Will Dub said take a 10 minute nap, Deb. I wish I could. Here's another thing of fire. Here's another one. Yeah. Here's another bang of fire. Here's another one. Here's another one. Yeah. Here's another bang of fire. Fire. Uh, uh, uh. Here's another bang of fire. Uh. With my boy Kevin stays. And that chick angel.